Africa. November 2nd, 2017, I'm showing two visitors. They might actually be the first to actually see this. The ninth mosaic drawing combo of the Under the Wing series, artwork number 65. The title is important. It's called, I'm just knocking around this zoo, like dot, 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 on a Buchenwald death camp afternoon, dot, 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 with sea monsters and a sea serpent. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Not quite a guess, but well, not the, well. just the title. Well, have, a, have a seat. A sit down? Well, sure. Oh, right all there. right. Perfect. Because uh, I don't want you to injure yourself over <laughs> the gas. Come on. Look at all of oh, that person. Dear God, what does he know? What can he possibly be experiencing? Oh, yeah. So, I... I'll, I'll let you continue observing oh, for a half minute she, before I tell you what else is going on in here. So I can take it from here. Okay. Nail Thanks. wire. Hmm. Bound by by wood. I gotta come over here because the light is better from here. So mm. surrounding the figure are sketchbook sketches from sketchbooks of mine between 1972 and 2015. From yes. Champaign, Illinois, Scotland, Green Lake, um, two former girlfriends. <coughs> two former girls. Uh, there are also sketches for sections of two different Under the Wings artworks. Oh. Which I'll have to point out. You may have to. So yes. this was a sketch for a section of uh, Under the Wings uh, 51, Sorrows of Love, Homage to Ro Robert Desnoe, which you both saw at the Seattle Central Exhibit in 2013. Mm. It was kind of in this um, unusually shaped frame. This here was a sketch for a detail of Under the Wings 48, Italian Jewish resistance hero Eugenio Curiel, Castel Sant'Angelo and My Flying Chi, Obi Juju Kenobi which is reproduced in uh, Jewish Currents a few years ago. I'll, I, I'll give you a copy if you don't Please. have it. Um, and then... Uh, my folks' chins. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll uh, point yeah. out two other things in the figure. This from a black and white plate and a book uh, I got as a gift from family, Nin published 1972, Jewish Art and Civilization, published by Chartwell Books. It was a um, uh, made around 1926 to 28, um, a Passover um, like kind of fabric wool hanging in, in German and in uh, Hebrew. Uh -huh. So I reinterpreted it into color, at least just these four lines of it. Yes. This here, Oh. A composite. I bought a, a kind, of, it's like, kind of like a booklet of, of individual plates at Yad Vashem in their bookstore, uh, called from an exhibit called No Child's Play of things that were made in different concentration and death camps, yes. like by inmates. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I did a, this simplified drawing composite of two different dolls, mm -hmm. one of which was made by uh, someone uh, at the Auschwitz death camp, and the other one by uh, someone in it. I forgot what the other camp was. Mm -hmm. um, uh, these boats were probably drawn in the years I worked in Magnolia, and I used to commute along the uh, waterfront. Okay. And uh, like where the uh, there are tugboats there. And you sketched that. Yeah. Uh, so yes. again, we pulled out of different mm -hmm. sketchbooks. Uh, an ex-girlfriend. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. For a proposed artwork that was never done beyond the sketch of her harpooning me from a skiff at Green Lake, and oh, uh, um, <laughs> harpooned indeed! <laughs> wow. And I'm not mentioning names. Well, that's probably a good idea. Oh, excuse me. 
I'm curious about this. This is familiar 1972, to me. 1972, you would have never, ever seen it. Have you ever repeated the, the motif any place? You're no, right, I haven't. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Is that someone in a helmet? It looks like no, a No, just kind of like, thing. I used to do, like, repeat, I taught myself how to draw using repetigraph when I was 22, I had moved to Champaign and started where I started college at the community college. And I was just, I, I have a small number of sketches of people like in coffee houses and uh -huh. campus cafeterias yeah, and stuff. Okay. I saw what Dvorak Just, just kind of like, um, like cubist-like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Hmm. What's this? That was also from 1972 and I don't recall Exactly it's what like it was the about. Drug issues. But needles and gin one, and uh, dead and a high school pills. friend of mine had oh, uh, gotten into heroin and, yeah. and committed suicide a few oh. years earlier, so perhaps it I was about that. I don't know, it's just yeah, a guess. Something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's hard for me to. to I keep going back to the face of this yeah. person. Yeah. Now, there's something really significant to me about this portrayal in the Under the Wing series, which makes it completely different than any other drawing and or mosaic drawing combo in the entire series. And so now, why don't you have a seat and back. I'd be curious to hear if either of you can think of what that might be. Why this is unique. Yeah, why this portrayal. And it doesn't have to do with the mosaic sections, which are also really different. Is it that, is it that he's looking directly at us? No, because there are other drawings okay. among the many portraits, like over 60 works. Now, there are many who are like face, had, were facing the photographer, okay. whoever, whatever. I'm yes. not making out any wings in here. Well, there aren't any wings in any of the, uh, mos the only, the only one mosaic drawing combo has, uh, has wings in it. Uh, the one of, um, uh, Sandra Damastro that I did last year, uh, Primo Levi's hiking pal. None of the others have wings, including this one. So, should I just say what it is? Please do. Yeah, sure. Um, what, what startled me on looking at it repeatedly in, in my apartment upstairs, yes. which, as you know, triples as my home storage and art studio, yeah. is that this is the only drawing from my perception in the entire series where the person I portrayed looks sorrowful and sad. Oh, I remember really? Jack Olive years ago when I had a small exhibit at Mercer on the United Methodist Church wow. telling me and writing a testimony letter which he said the drawings are so those beautiful depictions and so on and every time I look at this he just looks My so yeah. beat up in a way you know okay. like like okay. psychologically okay and just profoundly sad to me that's how I see I, it. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and astonished that in the others the expression is not sadness of course I'm not well they can be inherently sad yeah. I remember at the very first uh, that exhibit at Hillel in 1992 uh, I remember uh, Elizabeth Nucci uh, uh, someone I've known in Seattle mm -hmm. since before I moved here uh, told me that she was uh, tears had come down her cheeks went while walking around at the exhibit because she found the drawing so profoundly sad. Yes. But the depictions, but they can be, but this, his head, yes. his face, uh -huh. his yes. eyes, the mouth, yes. just to me, yeah. has a completely different, uh, and, uh, and I don't know. Uh -huh. What I, um, um, yeah. Mm. What I see. Can I see that? It's a person who reminds me of my daughter's friends. Um, a good number of, of her friends, particularly in Special Olympics, live with looks that are like that. Not, not always, mm -hmm. and, and not uniformly. Uh, but I, I see a person who is, who is born with something that leads to that face, a face that is just deeply and constantly puzzled. What is happening to me? Where am I? Thanks. I'm going to, um, this is approaching 10 minutes, which is pretty long. Yeah, so I'm going to turn this up all to a separate segment. Okay.